The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Boston Marathon Day. Um, so far, everything's going well. It's like a like a huge, huge event. Um, very meaningful, and it's incredible that uh, Ernst van Dijk, uh, South African, has for the tenth time won the wheelchair race. Hope I haven't uh, given anything away, but. Uh, it is remarkable. Uh, it's just um, a brilliant, brilliant race. And we're going to see what happens. In fact, they're going, I can hear the helicopters. I'm just uh, probably a half a mile, no, probably less than half a mile from the uh, from Commonwealth Avenue where the race goes down before it gets to Heartbreak Hill, just near the Newton City Hall. Um, very, very pretty city hall area uh, designed by Olmsted. Olmsted did that whole Boston Common, the whole the whole uh, route from the Boston Common all the way through Newton and many other places, in fact. And uh, it's, it's still quite pretty. Uh, <clears throat> so we're looking. Thank you, Steve Rhodes, for t introducing us to the new week. Giving us that start here at TFNN, um, beautiful, beautiful two-day start, two-hour start to our week, and um, here we are looking at no, it's two hours, not even yeah, nine o'clock to ten, ten o'clock to eleven, two hours, and then I come on eleven o'clock till noon uh, Eastern time, Monday through Friday on um, market days. Today, I will be doing Larry's show um, at, le at noon. It works out. I'm, I'm able to do it today. I, I'm not sure how many times I can do it, but I, I'm, I'm, it's my pleasure to be able to do it. So I'll be here at noon, so two hours today. And then you've got uh, Daryl Rhodes, Dave White. You've got Tom O'Brien at 4 o'clock till 6. Don't forget, you've got Tom O'Brien giving you that five-day uh, intro introduction to the trading day. Uh, seminar that uh, occurs uh, for those of you who bought your Tiger Dollars, and uh, that's a, that's a great a great bargain. So um, <clears throat> what I'm looking at here, that I, I did say Daryl Martin, my <laughs> engineer just reminded me. I thought I said Daryl Martin, <laughs> and um, so let's just go through numbers. Dow's up 11 at 16,419. S&P's up one and a quarter at 1866. Comp index is up. Two at 4,097. Now, this is very interesting. Gold is down at 1,286. Now, you remember, I make a big deal, a really big deal, about the, um, the in the Chapman wave getting to the fourth highest peak. It's just a very simple, this is, the core of my analysis was initially called the seven wave form because I found that going to Ds were very, fourth highest peak, D, A to B to C to D, consecutively higher peaks with capital letters on the upside, I found that that was where you got the most um, volatility after a D. You don't have to, but that's, that's kind of where you've got to expect it. And what happened with gold in the daily chart, the GLD went where? It went to a peak D, and then it shot up to an E. It's not unusual to go to an E. Um, and the technicals then turned around sharply, and at 133.69 on the 14th of March, came tumbling down and went down to um, 123, I believe it is, that a three, up 311 on the uh, 1st of April, and then shot up to an A, B, C, three dojis, peak C, turned out to be a doji at C, a doji confirmation at peak C, and then a doji gap up to D, right on the 200 period moving average. Oh, you know, to be able to use these different techniques together is just, a, it's a real treat to be able to do that. Now what we've got is a potential A to B equals C to D in the diagonal. Now remember, this is not just a one-to-one -one move to the downside. It is a diagonal move, meaning that you can use the potential 
of, there we are, right there, the potential. Well, it's now a day late, but it has the potential to retest the low of 123.11 made on the uh, 1st of April. And if that's the case, then the 1 to 1 will take you to about 122. Wait a minute. It has to be lower, surely. One to, oh yeah, to 123.11 goes to 122. Right there, 122.55. Now, I don't know if it's going to happen like that, but that would be a good sign for two reasons. That would say, number one, and this is one of the reasons in my opening call, it's my, my, daily, um, my daily newsletter. And, yes, I did try a new font. Um, you know, it was by accident. I suddenly lost the font I was using. You know how it happens? I, I'm sure... The young people today don't have that problem. They just go right back and find whatever it was they were using. For us fuddy-duddies, we make a little mistake on a pat on, on something that we've done over and over and over and over, and then all of a sudden, you know, you just know the action that you do. You don't remember the whys or the wheres or the wherefores, and you lose and you can't get it back. So I couldn't get it back and I tried this new font and I like it. I'm getting compliments from a number of subscribers that they're enjoying the new, <laughs> new font. It's more legible. You don't have to squint. It's great. Um, uh, I like that. Thank you. Yes, I will, I'll keep it a little longer. Let's see if, we, if I, I'm, I'm, I can get used to it. And if, in fact, um, I, I think it's clear, and that's all I want out of this is to make it clear so that you can read everything as clearly as possible. So that's the gold contract. The gold looks to me like it should make a move towards the left side low bar of 123.11, and it should do it fairly soon. But the dollar doesn't have to be screaming to the upside. It should be rallying, and right now the dollar's rallying, but I have to tell you, it is one of the most pathetic rallies <laughs> It only went to a C before, and then it broke down. Now it's in what I call a sub buy signal, uh, not even a buy mode yet, but a buy signal in leg B, what I call a gray A and a gray B. And I have to tell you something. The, uh, when I look at this dollar, I just constantly say to myself, you have been saying, Mr. Chapman, for about I don't know how many years, that the dollar – when it rallies, it looks like it's rallying, but it's rallying on quicksand because the Fed, bap, 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 is knocking it down every time it's whack-a-mole. And on the other side of the coin, the TLT, which is, in fact, the 20-year, um, uh, Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund, constantly is being helped. It should be coming down, rates should be going higher, but in fact what's happening is that the Fed is determined to keep propping up bonds. I, that's just the way it looks at this particular point. So um, let me see. Uh, yeah, so I'll continue. So we're looking at bonds right now up 11, uh, 30 seconds at 134.08. Now, you know what? i tell you what's fascinating. I love to talk chart patterns, and sometimes chart patterns come about, and they occur in completely diverse fields. For instance, look at this pattern right here. This is the continuous contract and I am furious because I used to have this going back to 1970 something or other and these guys keep buying one another out so the the um, uh, what, what what is that index again the commodity index the CRB index I had it going way back now I can barely find it anymore I have to go to other sources to get a CRB index and the bond fund instead of going out um, way, way, way back and showing you those beautiful channels that I've been demonstrating right here for years. Um, the, the only thing I've got is going back to 2001. What is with these guys? I, I mean, come on. Just give me the contract and hold it there for a long time. So anyway, you see this this up channel, you see that support in the bonds on the continuous contract, how it didn't break down. Yeah, it stuck underneath, but it never closed underneath that pinkish line if you're looking at tiger tv now look what's happened you see that cluster pattern there with an a to a b saying there's a counter trend rally in bonds look at this patterns repeat over and over and over here's a pattern that surprised me we didn't we had this we sold it we didn't have it when it suddenly shot up 
General Electric goes to where? Instead of making the arch formation to test the left side low of 2432, it spikes up on great news on Thursday, on great earnings, that is, good outlook. And that pattern is the bond pattern where the trend line support holes and it breaks back into the middle part of the trading range. So leg D in the weekly chart of General Electric save the day turns out to also be a little bit of a market positive at this particular point. So I've covered that. Let's go to our first caller. We've got Mark in Denver. Mark, how are you? Good. How are you, Basil? Good. Thank you. You'd like Good. to look at? Yeah, uh, one of our old tra tradable ones, staples. That's people. So, so this is staples, right? Yeah. Okay, folks, the symbol is SPLS. Now, this is very interesting. I, we, we've been wanting in the, my opening call, my daily uh, newsletter, we've been in and out of the stock. I've been trying to, uh, we got it along at 12, 13, but I didn't type it in here. It should have been that we took, I think, a 20 cent loss. I think it was a 20 cent, maybe 25. 20 cent loss on the last entry on uh, Staples. It was doing beautifully, and then it just gapped down. Um. Now, do you have a position at this particular point? Yeah, so I didn't quite follow your recommendation. I got in um, quite a bit lower than your entry the other day. I got in good, like good. 12.92 or 11.92-ish, and I, because I got in so low, I didn't take the stop. Um, and I am um, holding my, I've set my stop a little bit, um, kind of I'm looking at that bar from 4.11, which has a low of 11.57, so I've got my stock just set under that. But I'm okay, so let, let me just let me do a couple of things here because I need to just talk about staples um, in a fundamental way, but I won't be doing the numbers of their, their business plan. I'm talking about them as the comp go, go, going with the competition and going with uh, what I think that they're doing. I get staples because I, I go to staples for, for various things. So I'm on the email list, and I've noticed over the last, oh, I think definitely the last three months, but it started about six months ago, that there was definitely a change in attitude. But it's only in the past, oh, you know, time flies. I might be wrong by a couple of weeks. I'd say in the past two and a half months, maybe three, certainly what month are we in? We're in uh, the fourth month. Yeah, certainly in 2014. I think that Staples has become far, far, far more aggressive than they had ever been, that I can recall, in pushing uh, products, pushing sales, pushing discounts, and pushing out their, uh, their different reward uh, programs. And as such, I think that there's a change in the... Um, the philosophy that is filtering down, as I see it, right into their, their product a lineup and the actual sales pitches. That, to me, is very important because in this, in this particular era, oh, I hear music. So we've got a break coming up. Uh, if you can hold on, I'm gonna, I would like to just finish up with Staples. I think it's holding right now. Okay. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is back with another Tiger Dollar special, and as part of this promotion, not only can you receive up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend, but you can also gain access to a five-part live webinar series with Tom O'Brien taking place the week of April 28th. Each morning during the week at 8 a.m., Tom O'Brien will walk you through how he sets up the market live and digest the previous day's trading action while analyzing overnight markets abroad in order to anticipate what kind of trading day to expect. Each 60-minute live morning webinar will be archived by around 9.30 a.m. that very morning so that if you can't attend live, it'll be available for your viewing pleasure on demand whenever you're ready. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service and they never expire. So now is a great time to lock in extra savings on all TFNN products. Don't miss out on Tom O'Brien's five-part webinar series. Get your Tiger Dollars today with up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend before this special is over by visiting TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. So we're looking at staples. And the way I'm looking at staples is this. On a purely technical level, it's going to have to tell us whether it is ready for prime time in a recovery like Boston Scientific or any of those others like uh, Rite Aid, uh, if it's it's going to do that, then I would suggest that this is the week, in fact, in the next two days, maybe today, Monday, by Wednesday afternoon, Staples needs, and today's a good day as an example, it's down two cents at 12.02 um, SPLS, not good enough. It needs to clear Friday, Thursday's high of 12.07. 12, 12, 12, 12 to 12.18 12, is really the target for the next day and a half. Then it needs to climb above the um, 12.37. It needs the 12.40 sometime, I'd say this week, preferably this week, not next week, but this week. And it also needs not to close under certainly 11.83, the low of... Um, the low of the 16th, but the candle that you're looking at, the candle at the time that you were entering, the candle with 11.97 as a high on the 11th of April and 11.57 as a low, believe me, if this thing starts to, to worm its way back towards oh, anywhere into the 11.72 area, 11.71, there's a good chance it's going to retest the low of that candle. Now, why I mentioned all this stuff is because the weekly chart needs to get to leg B as quickly as possible, and that will be occurring above 12.50. If it can start leg B for the first time, it's showing signs of being able to tackle that very ugly candle of the week of the 7th of March. It's just, for me, it's real simple. If it fails to do that and it starts to uh, slide, 
This is going to make a little mini uh, M pattern, uh, an H pattern that could go to an M. It's going to take even longer for it to turn around, and that's going to be telling me two things. One thing about the economy is a little bit slower than people are thinking, and number two is that Staples just hasn't got itself organized at this particular point. So, um, so I'm thinking here that I'm going to give you the parameters that to me would be very important. A close below 11, I don't know where your stop is, but a close below 11.83, you make it 11.81, says, uh-oh, what's that 11.70s? Because once it's in the 11.70s, that's kind of a failure pattern. I think the MACD will start to turn down then. Um, so I would not mess around with it. I'm even, I'd even say if, you take it out, if it, you're taken out now, in, in the next two days, that is, I'd be prepared to wait, and I'd wait for really good strength to build in the weekly chart, and only when it starts to show, demonstrate very good strength by breaking to the 1240s would I actually start adding to positions. But at this particular point, you're in the position, you're in some money. I would, I would probably say to you at least part of it shouldn't make, take a loss at all. Um, if anything, um, take, give yourself a little bit of room for a tiny profit, and then the stop should be at your entry price. That's number one. Okay. And then number two is if perchance – and, and I, I wanted to mention this just real quickly. In the 120-minute chart in the E-mini, um, it is in a question right now of an alternate wave. It's holding very nicely. If this was leg F with the technicals deteriorating, it should have been down much more. So this could be an alternate wave count. So one of the reasons why in my opening call, we have only long positions except for their one major core position short that we still own, hopefully we'll own for a while, um, even though we have a counter trend long, mostly all the positions are long. And the reason is because I'm looking at strength rather than weakness. So staples at this particular point, I see no reason why on a day like this it shouldn't actually have been up six cents. Now it's unchanged. So yeah. I want to see it close towards the high of the day. I think as a tiptoe entry point, I think that, Mark, you're, you're in a nice position for the chance that it's going to get to the 1223, then the 1239, and then the 1243 level by Friday. If it's able to do that, you've got a great entry point, and then you've got room to decide whether to add or not. If it breaks down, I say, hold off, stay away, let's see if this thing can build a base. I hope yeah. that helps you, Mark. Yeah, it does. I was mostly encouraged by how well it did on, on Friday. And yeah, got, I was also. And I, I thought, yeah. should I go in again? Should I not? I, now I have, we've got really nice positions. I don't want to mess around. I will get back to Staples if it shows us decent uh, gains. Okay, so thank, thank you. you very much for calling, and congratulations. Great entry. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good. Now let's go to Nahid and Safety Harbor. Nahid, what you're looking at? Hi, Basil. I like to look at Google. Okay, now Google is very interesting. You're looking at the Google L, right? No, actually, I was looking at Google. Oh, you are. Okay, so I'm not sure they're trading Google and they're trading the Google L. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure how the whole thing goes. I, but I'm you're trading Google. Google. Okay, I, okay, that's all. That's all I need to know. Are you long or you short? Long. Okay, I need to speak to you about this, and we'll be right back with Nahid and David and Dan straight off to this break. Andrew. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. We're back, and let me just finish putting this in. Goog, there it goes. So, uh, so we've got Google. Um, one is the non-voting shares, and the other the voting shares. So they're all trading the same. Um, but it does show that the um, in the prices that I've got here, and my notation. It does show that the prices change because Google's trading right now at 528.71, and that's what you're looking at, right? Yes. Okay, so we're, looking, we're talking with now Hidden Safety Harbor, and now you are long. Well, if you are long, a couple of things need to happen with Google. I, there's something going on with Google that I'm, I'm not impressed with. I, I, I mentioned that I, I had a peak in the... Um, in the weekly chart, it was either a D or an E, and that I would not be surprised if Google, like some of the other um, very strong momentum stocks, finally saw some kind of a, a, a time, pro either a time or a price or both, pullback. And in this case, it's so far, uh, yeah, it, it is priced to a certain extent, about 100 points down. Um, but at the same time, what really is important is how the nine period moving average in the monthly is going to hold into the end of April. And the candle that I'm looking at is last week's uh, very long-legged doji. And what it says is that a close below 518.46, it's trading at 528.96 right now, uh, 10 points higher, will be very negative this week. And a close above uh, 557 round number high would be very positive. My suspicion is that right at this particular point, it's trapped and it's going to go 
um, let me just do the 120 minute chart again. That you see, even the 120 minute chart gave back uh, seven points already today. It's at 529.11. So my concern is that when the general market is holding well, Dow's up 32 now, S and P's up three and a half, and yeah, you've got Google down 1.30%. I'm not sure that I want to be long. Now, I might not be short, but I don't know if I want to be long. My gut instinct here is that short is actually the preferential um, uh, uh, directional trade in Google until it proves that it's got strength to hold. Every time it's tried to rally, it's gone to an A, and that turns into an A minus. So the candle that we're looking at is the candle of um, the 15th, with a low of 518, uh, let me just check that. Am I looking at the right thing? With a low of 529.56 and a high of 544.10. Now, um, so are you? Did you just get into the long position, or? Yes, I got in around 526 and a few cents. But, you know, um, if you got in at 526, because right now this is exactly. I mean, I, I bet if I went into a 30-minute chart, even a 10. Let me go to a 10-minute chart. Um, I think you're right on the cusp. If if Google is able to form some kind, here we go. Let me have a look at this one. Um, if Google is tr able to form some kind of yes, if I would, you know what I would do, Nate? I would make my stop right where you got in. Okay. Give it a little room. Well, you could do two things. One is you could take a little bit of a profit now and say, you know what? That means I can still have another extra two points uh, leeway from my entry point, I would not. I'd make my stop my entry point, and I'd say, Google, right at this particular moment, because I think the, the Dow is very limited upside today. I also think it has fairly limited downside, but I would not be surprised if it closes weaker than stronger today. So what if I'm looking at this, go, Google, if the market turns around, I think Google will slide. So my suspicion is make your stop your entry point, and if by any chance it's able to get above the high of uh, 528.34, that's not good enough, 529. If it's able to break above 529.50 in the next two, uh, three, 30, uh, three, three 10 minute slots at so 30 minutes time, if it's able to do that, then I would just raise my stop one point for every point that it moves up from here, uh, a stop in some part of my position. Personally, I, I I think it's going to go down. I think so Google's do looking think weak. Where do you think it would go, Basil, if it goes down? If it, if, if it goes down and it breaks the left side support of 522 is the 200 period moving average, then it should test the 5, what was that, 518 low uh, of, um, was that uh, last week on, yeah, on the 15th. So I, if it does... Then it's, that means on a weekly basis it's going to close below the wick of the candle of last week, and that's usually good on the on the directional side for at least one more week. And that says next week could also be weak for Google. I so I this is just my opinion. I think Google has limited upside right now until it does more testing, and I wouldn't be surprised that the testing area is between 518 and 512. Maybe at that point it can have a better rally. But I, I I'm kind of nervous about Google. Okay, Hope that helps thanks. you. Yes, thank you so much. If you had a chance, could you look at Tesla too? You did. Now uh, you know, I might hour. do. I, I got a lot of callers, so I'll try to do it in the next hour when I do Larry's show. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much for for holding. And thank you for listening. Let's go to David and Jackson. Hi, David. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Basil? I'm well, oh. thank you. Oh, You'd McCune like to look Manny. at McEwen Mining. McEwen Mining. M U X. Okay, that's McEwen Mining. I've notated this so many times, and I, it keeps disappearing. So I, what position do you have? This is trading at $2.24. Well, I'm waiting to buy it, and oh, I okay. want to know if, if you, it's making an L for an A in the hourly chart. Yeah, and not only that, on the daily, it's A, B, C, D. Um, but here's my concern about it. At $2.24, the, the monthly chart... Well, the month hasn't finished, but so far it's not a good-looking monthly chart. 
the weekly chart A B C D made a beautiful A to B to C to D in the in the in the weekly chart going to the upside and at uh, three seventy four it pulled back sharply and it's got that pattern you know the one that I call the Eiffel Tower straight up and straight down like a capital A so that makes the it makes it absolutely imperative I mean there isn't even a choice but if McEwen let me just put this in here to show you what I'm looking at. I'll make it bright red so that we're looking at the same thing. That A pattern, straight up and straight down, says in the weekly chart there really isn't very much support. So if I grab the daily chart, I have to go back to the candle. The 214 is the, is the low, the trough that I'm looking at of the 15th. My suspicion is why don't you wait a little bit. Let's see how the 2, if it goes to 218 to $2.14, Let's see how that holds. If it does hold, there might be a bounce in it. I don't see anything more than a bounce. That doesn't mean to say it needs to go back to the low of a dollar. What was it? Dollar fifty or something? A dollar seventy back in um, back in December. I went December. to dollar sixty-three one day. Yeah, you see, I my concern is that this pattern I'm looking at is showing no strength. So I know so it sounds you know two dollars and twenty-three cents. How wrong know. can you go? Well. Just a, just a, a you know a, a twenty cent move takes you down ten percent in the blink of an eye, so I'm going to suggest hold off. Call me again. We'll look at the same stock. Have patience. Let's see if it can hold two eighteen to two fourteen to twelve. If it doesn't hold that area, hourly, it will be. I need to know your count on the hourly contract. Okay, give me one second. Hourly contract. Here we go. Let me just find my hourly. Is that an if L for a new A? Okay, give me, give me a, give me a second here. Sixty, sixty, sixties. I think I've got everything but a sixty. I'll change one of them. I go to my thirty-minute chart. Give me a second. Right here, I'll change it to an hourly. Uh, plink, plonk. There it is. And we're looking at MUX. And I'll tell you what it is right now. So this is from the high of um, a 10.30 on the 10th, and it comes down A, B, C, D, E. Oh, you yep, must you're... have the wrong thing. It wasn't no 10.30. No, no, no. I'm talking about at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, this hasn't seen 10.30 for a long, long time. So this is a trough F, and, yeah, on this particular pattern right now, you'd be – you'd be enticed to try to make a trade because it looks like it's holding a little doji candle. If you look at the if you look at the nine period moving average, if you look at the MACD, if you look at the stochastic, stochastic's flat. In fact I just did a trade this morning exactly like this. I don't know if I can find it. Uh, yeah there it is. This is a two minute chart of the E mini and the reason why I'm mentioning it is I got out a little early, even though I had a peak E top, because the mag the stochastic looked like it was going to make a little V-shaped bottom. Instead, it flattened out and went even lower. That's exactly the reason why I brought this up. Is exactly like the pat. Oh, what am I doing here? It's exactly like the pattern that we're looking at in your stock on the 10-minute chart. The stochastic looks like it's about to turn up. In fact, it could be flattening. Now, it could bounce a little bit. And I don't know if you want a quick bounce for, you know, five cents or seven cents. I, I, I treat that as a little bit dangerous to do. I, I, I'm going to suggest have a little patience. I think you're going to get a much better entry point, but you might have to wait. But is it oh. making an F now? Yep, that's an F. And that will be a con – if, if it doesn't make a new low in this hour, then it's going to be a trough F. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Okay, and that's you. the answer. So, hey, thank you for calling. Bye. Thank you. So that was a, that was a good question. David and Jackson just wanted to know technical information, and that was what I gave him. Now let's give, go to Dan in Baskin Ridge, New Jersey. Dan, how are you? Doing well, thank you, Russell. Good. I, I was calling about the IWM. Um, I'd like to get back short. I was wondering if it'd make it up to one sixteen. Uh, but, uh, but a second question, um, I'm wondering if the, any uh, bounce that we'll have will be more of a time versus price movement to the upside. And, and that was m more of a question that I had, um, you know, whether we won't see much of a bounce in price upside, but just a 
sideways move before our next leg down? That is a really good question. I should have actually dealt with it right at the very opening and talked about internal lows and residual lows. And in this particular instance, I think we've made some kind of a tradable internal low in uh, the indices. But the fact that you've got the Qs, the QQQs trust series, that's the index 100, and the IWM really not participating, and in fact, they were the leaders going into the highs, says to me that this is a great question because I think that in the, the lagging indicators, you're looking like, and I would here include the IBB as well, even though we are actually on a very short-term basis long in my opening call via a, a different instrument. I'm suspecting that we're looking more at time than price. And I mentioned in my, in my opening call, my trader's corner of my opening call this morning, I, I did this. I remember singing the song on air back in 2000. Oh, you know, time flies. Was it 2012? In, in August, April, right? I said, mm, this reminds me very much of that song that Frank Sinatra used to sing when he said, Ride it high in April, shot down in May. Excuse me, that wasn't quite Frank Sinatra, but that was, those are the words. And I'm thinking that this is a chance that we might see the same thing here, that April actually is this counter trend rally, and that May we might see another pullback. And that would say you're absolutely correct in identifying that maybe we're looking now more at time. In other words, we've gone in the IWM from a low of, still getting used to this here, a low of 108.66. Let me type that in. 108, this is a pretty, I mean, percentage-wise, 108.66. 108.66 to today's high of 113, uh, where can I see it? 113. Oh, let's see, 53. I um, mean, that's seven points. That's a nice, it's about a 6%, 6.5% gain. Yeah, I don't think there'll be another 6.5% gain on the upside. I think it'll be more like going to the moving averages resistance that I'm looking at right now. That's like at 114, maybe 100, yeah, maybe 114 to 115.30. So somewhere kind of in the area that you're looking at, the nine period moving average is at 114.04 on the IWM, which is the iShares, Russell 2000 ETF. So I'm going to say, have some patience. I'm suspecting that the MACD is going to deflect lower, that the stochastic will not rally. That's just my suspicion. But in the meantime, I think that you are, um, you're, at this particular point, you aren't in, in either one. You're just, you're waiting. Is that correct? Yeah. The last long position I had was in Ruby. I set the stop down below a hammer candle of uh, 104. And so I got stopped out today at 103. And uh, right now, the only thing I have is UVXY at 58 and 56. So, or 50, okay, so you I, see, I, now I even the UVXY, which is a 200% short the uh, uh, the VIX, that's 203. I should know this. I've traded it. It's That's 300%, right? No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's the same as TVIX. It's a 200% okay. long. Okay, so uh, so what we're looking oh it's, uh, yeah so this is the long position on the VIX index of course I should remember that um, it's trading at fifty six forty eight and um, it's showing let me just show the VIX for for the moment the VIX index is trading it tried to rally and now it's back under fourteen it's at thirteen forty three I now I I think you're absolutely correct I'm looking at this now that the IWM should go a little higher you need a little patience I'm suspecting we're going close to April. Uh, hope that helps you, Dan. Very much so. Be well, Basil. Thank you. We'll be back, folks, right after this with John in Knoxville and Ron in Denver. And uh, hold on, we'll be back. Dow's up 19, S&P's up 3, and three you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. We are back, and we are going to go to uh, John in Knoxville. John, how are you? Very well, Basil. And yourself? I'm very well, thank you. You're looking at? CMG. All right. My question to you is, what is your position? I have no position, I'm just starting to initiate one, and I want to uh, play it for a little bounce. I believe that it is flattening out right now. Okay, what we're looking at CMG, Chipotle Mexican Grill, Inc.? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I've got this in the monthly chart in a peak C, if it doesn't make a new recovery high this, uh, this month. It's a little weird. Everything about it says to me it's more like some kind of a D, an E, an F, maybe a G, but it, it doesn't really look like a C, but I'm going to let that be. 
because the, the weekly chart gave me a sell signal and I was remiss in not giving my subscribers this as an option, uh, a, a, a put option, which is really what I was thinking of for some time. Um, as a really good way to play CMG, just with the with the, the increased costs in the different uh, food sectors uh, and being somewhat toppy, then having a pattern that looks like the A pattern in the weekly chart with the MACD and stochastic failing, and then the daily chart gave me a peak F slash B alternate count, which I chose as an F, the little hat on top. So I've got this in a sell mode in the daily. I've got it in a sell mode in the weekly. And as I say, that monthly chart, I, I'm going to try to spend some more time on it because something something's a little weird. Maybe it is a C and it does pull back a little deeper and only stops maybe at about the low of 480 back in the, that was the low of the, the week. No, that was the low of January. And then it starts a brand new move to the upside. I must tell you, I think that this is, this is looking very weak. Now, you want to play a bounce. Now, my, my contention has been that in understanding trends always remember that the larger trend oh i wish i had my cd up i'll try to do it for the next segment when i do larry's show the larger trend is what's going to be the one that's most important so i'm going to suggest to you that i would rather be looking at the short side and wait for a bounce to short rather than to play it long because the tide looks to me in, in the three of the main segments, the 120 minute chart, the daily and the weekly, as to be going down. And if it's going down, any bounce could fail in a split second and then you get trapped. So would you consider a short position or either you want to play the bounce or nothing? I was just going to play the, the like an interday, intraday. Out. Yeah, and even now in today, I was thinking of that as I was looking at the chart, the 120-minute chart, even the intraday says if it's going to bounce, I don't think it's going to do much more than going from a minus 8 to a minus 5. So to play a $511 stock for a three-point bounce, when in fact, if the market turns a little weaker later on, which that's just my suspicion right now, it needs a day of rest, I'm suspecting that CMG will test the low of uh, this morning of 5.06.05. Uh, so I'm, I'm having difficulty here being convinced that there's a bounce worth playing. So I'm going to make the suggestion, hold tight. I wouldn't play the bounce right now. I'd rather short a pop-up of two or three points because I think this is going to go lower. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about CMG. Now, the best thing about it is the stochastic and the 120-minute chart is at 5% and the MACD is expanding to the downside, but that stochastic says there should be, a, I, I agree with you that it's probably ready for a bounce, but I don't think it's going to be more than a little bit of time and just a little bit of price. I don't think, you want to play $3? I'm not sure. All right. Well, yeah, I, I'm going to suggest that you hold off, John. Um, okay. Okay, and I I'll actually cover a little bit more of it in the next hour. So, folks, I've got Ron in Denver. Ron, can you hold on, and I'll take you in the next segment when I do Larry's show. Sorry to have run out of time. I'll be right back. Dow's Thank Dow's you, sir. SP's up four, and I'll be back with those who are holding on for the next segment. Larry Pesaventos, trade what you see. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.